Hello, I am Aoya Laipe, and I like to hop into top tier matches in War Thunder, and then personally kill the entire enemy team by myself. Welcome to my channel. He's on my tail, he's on my tail, he got dodges bullets, and he rams me. And it's official, I've now been on a double digit kill streak with at least one jet in every tech tree. And if you're like, wait, even Japan? Uh, yeah, I took out a test drive in the F-15J. If you want to know just how good the AAM-3s are, you can just, uh, wait until I make a video about it, because today we're talking about the Jaguar IS. This is the new event vehicle. Whenever an event or battle pass vehicle or whatever, something like that comes out, all the creators just get test drives on it, like, by default. We don't even need to ask for them. Like, like, Gaijin just gives them to us in the same way iTunes gave everyone that annoying U2 album, like, ages ago. And much like U2 albums, the problem with event vehicles is that they tend to have a reputation for sucking, just absolutely absolutely sucking. And, and most of the creators will tell you that this plane uh, sucks too, but uh, that's only unrealistic. In arcade, this thing is, um, well actually it is, it is still pretty sucky, but it is a really strong specialist. And it's actually pretty funny. You, you can do some real damage with this plane, but you have to, you have to be a real rat bastard. Okay, so first things first, um, this plane's speed isn't competitive. Its energy retention is bad. The acceleration leaves much to be desired. Uh, it doesn't turn that well. Uh, the gun is terrible. Really, really terrible gun. Literally the worst gun I've ever seen on a jet in this game. Uh, if you've been trying to get gun kills with this plane unsuccessfully, your skill issue isn't that you're missing, it's that you're trying to use the gun at all. It is remarkably bad. And to top it off, the, uh, the plane is ugly. Just a visually unappealing thing to look at while you're playing. I mean, who puts the missiles on top of the wings? That's just a natural. Now, what this plane does have going for it is that it has two Magic 2s at a battle rating of 10.7. That means you can get it into a 10.3 arcade lineup. And that means you can play this plane in the same way you'd play Jenga, except the enemy team is the tower and your own teammates are your opponents. You see, the Magic 2 is this finicky French missile. It has IRCCM, which means it is impossible to flare if you fire directly into your opponent's engine, but it's extremely easy to flare otherwise, like if you fire from any other direction. So this is a perfect shot or bust missile, basically. And this plane is pretty much incapable of maneuvering for the perfect shot uh, because the plane sucks. You can start to see where the problem is, right? Now, normally the solution would be to just dunk the missile into someone at point blank range, like it's an R60M or Python 3. But you can't just dunk Magic 2s into people like that because it takes forever to speed up, so it can't really hit stuff at close range. Plus, it takes forever 1.8 seconds, I believe, to arm the proximity fuse. So it basically won't explode anyways if you fire at a close enough range. And at 10.3, in a down tier in arcade, you'll run into a few people who don't have flares, and as people die, they'll hop into planes that are increasingly less likely to have flares. And you can't flare a missile if you don't have flares, or if you're going slowly, as this SU-25 or uh, or that VPO guy in the J-34 helpfully demonstrate. If you fire a Magic 2 at someone who doesn't have flares from 2 to 3 kilometers away, uh, they will die. The missile has time to arm the fuse and, and speed up and get really maneuverable, and they, they, they will just die. So, in theory, you can just methodically pick off the whole team slowly one player at a time. Just get them the worst planes, then pick them off even harder. Now, of course, in, in practice, the problem is that uh, people try to stop you if you just run around killing everyone. Like, like trust me on this, I, I would know. And the Jaguar IS can't really outrun or dogfight them because it sucks. And, and being able to deal with that is the key to playing this plane right. Uh, you know, assuming you're trying to dogfight with him. If you want to drop bombs with him, you know, go ahead. The, the, the bases don't run away. Now, have you ever seen my guide on positioning? Uh, probably not, because it's my least viewed video. Uh, but trust me, if you want to play the Jaguar IS in arcade, you're going to want to eat your vegetables and go watch it. The secret sauce for this plane is that you don't need to be fast enough to outrun your pursuers. You just need to be close enough to a safe zone when you fire off your missile that you can run to it before anyone can pin you down. So uh, there's that VPO guy again, let's just kill him real quick. The uh, the J-35, you know, the Draken, uh, does actually have flares, but has very, very few of them. Also, most of the F-104s you'll see won't have flares because the ones in the American tech tree don't have flares, and like most people play America. Now, of course, the issue here is that this is a flat map with no AAA cover. So the trick is to stick close enough to your teammates that you can hit your targets and then run to your teammates before your pursuers can get you. If you have enough of a head start, your teammates will swarm your pursuer before your pursuer is able to get close enough to kill you. 
and you just do that over and over again and as you'll see throughout this match uh, they'll get increasingly determined to kill me but they'll also be in increasingly bad planes and there will be less of them like the enemy players might have better planes like the actual airframes themselves but if if I have a team and they don't then I win and if you mow down all of the sponges then their best players will get swarmed by your own teammates because there won't be any sponges to distract your teammates as I said it's like playing Jenga you get to take all the easy pieces and leave the difficult ones for your own teammates and the enemy team is the Jenga tower. So wait, a well, I think you should just kill the enemy team. Man, you really are a one-trick pony. Yeah, but it's a really good trick, isn't it? And just as a reminder, if you find yourself directly behind an enemy player for whatever reason, then yeah, sure, your magic tools will kill them, flare or no flare. You know, if it's looking right at the engine, good luck. The issue is that this plane is just really not suited to maneuvering for shots. You want to instead get ruthless about target selection and positioning. And oh man, that means I'm gonna kill this poor guy again. Y you know, I won't lie, I was a new player once, so killing VPO players on repeat will always put some sort of smile on my face, but this legitimately isn't personal. VPO players tend to be at least above average, so I want him out of the way, and his whole lineup consists of stuff that is designed to be shot down by a Jaguar IS. Now, as you can see, my next move here is to just hang way, way out over on the side of the map like nowhere near anybody while my missiles reload. This makes you really annoying to kill, so no one really bothers, and that's good because if someone bothered to go really far out of their way to kill me, they would probably just kill me because this plane is, is kind of sucky. I actually ran into a lot of problems my first few matches with this plane. I, I would kill like two people and then just get super uber clapped and that happened like over and over again. Like the whole enemy team would just jump on me. And I had multiple people message me being like, hey, so you're trying out the new plane? Love the videos, but oof, better luck next game, man. A and after that happened a few times, I was like, Wait, wait, hold on, how do these people even know who I am? And then I realized I'd forgot to turn incognito mode back on. You see, I have a pretty huge target on my back for understandable reasons, and if people are like, oh crap, it's the crazy Val man, we, we need to stop him before he murders our team on YouTube, and then they all come to kill me, then there's not a whole lot I can do if I'm in a plane like this. Today's key phrase is soft counter. Let's kill this poor VPO player again. His plane is still one of the only few that don't have flares, and if I get him out of the way, then his mere existence will not distract my teammates from shooting down the planes that, that my plane would find tricky to shoot down. So in a moment, an F8 player will finally decide to start focusing me. This is a problem because the F8 can outturn, outrun, and outgun me. Uh, there's no way I'm getting behind a competent F8 player and he has flares to dodge my magic too if I fire my missile from any other position. And also the gun on my plane sucks, I'll actually riff on it in just a minute. The only card I can play against an F8 player that knows what he's doing is to take evasive maneuvers designed to delay his ability to kill me while I work my way back to teammates who can shoot him off my tail. It's entirely positioning. The entire viability of this plane in an air-to-air -air role is based around the fact that it has magic 2s and could fit into a 10.3 battle rating arcade lineup. So if Gaijin increases the battle rating on this thing, then you can forget using the Jaguar IS as the centerpiece of your arcade lineup. However, if you get sick of all the Harriers or Phantoms while you're out grinding the British tech tree, because they get like nothing but Harriers and Phantoms at, at one point, this will actually make a pretty good flavor addition, and it will be pretty good at mopping up near the end of the match when the enemy team has gone snowballed a bit. As I said, this thing is a specialist, and that's the sort of thing specializes in. Now, unfortunately, while I succeeded in leading my pursuer into a group of my own teammates, uh, my own teammates weren't able to get rid of him, because uh, they weren't very good, so I just die. But then I was like, ah, what the hell, I'll just pop a backup. You know, I got like a reward box or whatever it's called at the end of an early match that gave me backups on this thing, and I'm never going to use them otherwise. I'll tell you right now, the secret sauce for getting a 15 kill streak with this thing is to spam the matchmaker until you get a down tier on Mountain Ridge or African Canyon, and then you can aggressively hide behind the hills or running to and from your airfield's AAA cover. Since the airfields are close to the middle of, on those maps, uh, that means it's actually going to be way, way easier to reach a safe zone. Here, I, I don't have any AAA cover at all. And there are no rocks to hide behind. Um, this is very much a plane that would benefit from being able to hide behind a rock. That would also make it much easier to surprise people who do have flares. Uh, on a flat map, it's, you know, they see you coming. Like, this F4S guy here is, is one of only a handful of people this match who have flares that I actually managed to kill. That's actually going to be really important for this plane. I actually got a 9 kill streak in my third game with this plane, uh, doing that on African Canyon, and I had a level 1 crew. I could buy a level 75 crew and then spam the matchmaker enough to do that, but that would be kind of hacky. Plus, to be honest, I thought doing this well on a flat map was way more impressive. 
I, I did level up the crew a bit uh, before I did do this, though, and I also got expert crew on it on this plane. Also, if you actually want to know how to fly the plane, this is going to be way more informative. Uh, also, it wouldn't be fun. Like, I, I mean, I can fly whatever plane I want all day, uh, so it's definitely not going to be this one, right? <laughs> you know. Now, let me quickly riff on this gun. This thing has an Aiden auto cannon, which you might find strange because in my Hunter F58 video, I said the Aiden auto cannon was my favorite gun, and now it's my least favorite gun. What gives? So the difference is the Hunter F58 gets four of them, and it also gets radar to help you aim it. Uh, this thing, the Jaguar, gets only one of them. Yes, one, and it's going faster, and it's shooting at faster targets, and it also has no radar. If you're joining us from Realistic, you should know that in arcade, you tend to make gun kills at a much higher speed than in Realistic, and there's also a delay before the little arcade aiming reticle pops up, and if you're going high speed and you have a relatively brief window to fire, that means that you can't use it because it doesn't exist. So in order to reliably hit something with this gun, you will need to chase or turn fight someone, but that will get you killed in this plane. So counterintuitively, the correct way to use this gun on this plane is, generally speaking, to make wild high speed pot shots that you fire blind at people. And like, if it hits, it hits. If it doesn't, it doesn't. This plane is a very dangerous specialist, but the missiles are situational and the gun is pretty finicky. So, you know, just be aware of what you're buying. Now, even though I have an absolutely terrible position, I launch a Magic 2 at this F8 anyways, it's possible my missile could surprise him. And if I manage to get that guy out of his F8 by surprise, it will make my life much easier because I have no direct counters to a competent F8 player. So it's, so it's worth the shot. It misses though, but it was worth the shot. And now he's, uh, he's chasing me down, which is a problem. You know, people tend to do this when you attack them they uh, they try to kill you back uh, but I knew when I launched that missile that I could make a run for my teammates before he could really catch up to me he realizes this and, and breaks off as I said he knows what he's doing and if I can't get him to make a big mistake I can't kill him or and I can't even get him killed uh, I'm gonna fast forward through my last reload here because nothing interesting happens and I'm running out of things to say about the shitty shitty plane Honestly, doing well with this plane requires you to thread the needle so hard that it's just not fun. Anyways, I'm gonna shoot this A10 player because, um, because A10 players tend to suck. Uh, plus the, the match is almost over and there aren't really any other better targets in sight, so, um, you know, I'm, I'm kinda taking a use it or lose it mentality with my missiles. I'm like, bah, I might as well kill this F4U, you, you know, get one more kill right under the, uh, right under the wire. But, uh, he winds up shooting my wing off, even though I do kill him. But I did technically get a gun kill with this plane, so, so I'm like, ah, the match will end in, like, you know, 10 seconds anyway, so I just stay in the air until the end screen pops up, and then, uh, then I die, because I realize that's how the new severe damage mechanic works. Like, the game will just kind of euthanize you at the end, I hadn't realized that. So, um, so I'm gonna go find that, uh, that, that F4U player and tell him he managed to god mode me. Uh, that, it's been a while since I've been god moded. Also, I'm busy this weekend, so that's why you got an early video this week. Um, if you liked it, great. If not, uh, thanks for hate watching because YouTube really likes it when I have a good retention ratio. Anyway, subscribe and ring the bell if you uh, don't want to remember how to spell AOLIPAY next time you want to watch one of my videos.